Welcome back everyone to episode 4 of NHL Franchise Mode 21 with the Montreal Canadiens rebuild. And for those that watched episode 3, there it is on screen. Alexander Ovechkin is now part of the Montreal Canadiens. If you missed episode 1, 2, or 3, right now above, there's going to be a pop-up that's going to bring you right to this to the to the playlist so you can play so geekers if you're ready let's get into it and let's see how this season goes we're gonna definitely uh do it right now um let's see we're gonna be going up to the trade deadline so quickly we're just gonna review the lines and we're gonna set up the draft because that is important so right now we have Ovechkin, Kot Kanemi, and Josh Anderson on the line uh we could put Caulfield up there which doesn't do much because that's two snipers, but we can put Quinton Byfield there. And you see that also doesn't change much. So my best bet is probably going to be putting Cole Caulfield on the number one line with Kotkaniemi and Anderson, Oveshkin, Suzuki, and Byfield. But we're going to hold that off right now. We're going to let them play this way. That way we have an 95, 89, and 85. And then we have an 89, 90, 89. And then we have an 85, 84, and a 78 with Lover, the gentleman, Zachary Lerner, Ne en Quebec, and we have a star. Defensively, we have Romanov and Aaron Eggblad, Maurice Sider and Josh Burke, Leskinen and Caden Gould, who I really wanted to play on the higher line here, and I think I will. We're going to put Josh Burke there. I really want him to get his top four minutes. Uh, and quickly, goalies, we have Drigger, uh, who I just found out played for the Florida Panthers this year because he played yesterday. And Caden Primo. Now the only thing we're gonna quickly do is the special teams and power play. We got Kotkanemi, Suzuki, Byfield, Ovechkin, like that. I like a lot. And then we got the second line that is also killer. Uh, Four-man power play looking good. Uh, penalty kill makes sense. And three-man penalty kill perfect. We go into the extras quickly. Four and four. Ovechkin, Romanov, Eggblad, Suzuki, Tafoli. See, this is the only one I'm gonna change because. Yeah, you see, they put Caulfield there. So we're actually going to put Caulfield here with Suzuki. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to put, uh, obviously, Byfield. And we're going to put Tafoli. There we go. And then we got three on three. We got Kakemi, Ovechkin, Eggblad, Suzuki, Tafoli here, Byfield. And Tafoli with that's the defensive that I like. Extra attacker Ovechkin, Ekblad, shootouts Ovechkin, Suzuki, Tafoli, Kotkaniemi, and Caulfield. And we're gonna leave that as is. So without further ado, we're gonna quickly check which one of our rookies, whether it was Cole Caulfield or Quinton Byfield, that won an award last year, and then we will start simming. So the New Jersey won the pres the Stanley Cup. Chicago won the Presidents, Edmonton won the Clarence, and New Jersey, of course, won the Prince of Wales Trophy. And if we go into the individual awards, Art Ross goes to Jack Eichel, Hart Memorial to Patrick Kane, Nora to Jones, Lady Bing to Kane, Calder, oh no, Bowery Boulette actually took away Rookie of the Year from us. That is insane. Consumite to Forsberg, Rask wins the Vezina, Dreger wins the William and Jennings, so I'm glad we picked him up because he had a solid year. Bill Masterson right there, Cons, O'Reilly, Ted Lindsay, and Kane wins the Morris. So now we're going to see how the team performs as we move forward up to the last game of the preseason. So we're going to simulate up to the first of the preseason. And right here, they're offering us Eric Johnson for a second and a fifth. He has one year on his contract. That would be interesting, but I do not want Johnson on the team. I feel like that's just wasted cap space. We got to see now how we're going to perform. We could actually be done the rebuild for this one year, make it to the playoffs, and literally go right back to a, a rebuild. And too bad, so sad. So we're going to quickly send to the end right here. And let's see how we do. We went to nothing versus Ottawa. All right, we lose 1-0 versus Tampa. 2-1, 3-1 wins back-to-back -back versus Florida and Buffalo. We lose 3-1 to Toronto. We lose 4-2 to Detroit and win 5-0 against Boston, even though they re-signed Pasternak and stole him from us. And right there, three goals, three assists for Ovechkin, who's the point leader, six points in seven games. Kot Kaniemi with five assists. Quinton Byfield with two and two. Caulfield with two and two. And there we go, Suzuki 1 and 2. So those are our young guys right there. The guys we really want to focus on is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have Kirby Dak and Lever both with 2 points. 
which is pretty satisfying if you ask me. The only thing I am going to change, because I just realized, is Larue is a natural center and Kirby Dak can play on the right wing. So we will just change that up like that. Okay. Now, we're going to definitely have to go and look at the draft class. So we're going to advance to the next month and then one day after us the scouting assignment we're gonna go and check out what there is so we are moving forward waivers uh, players on waivers all right so waiver is now eligible we're not touching the waivers though and let's go assign our scouts right away so we definitely want to touch in on the queue we want to draft from our own backyard we can't miss out on anybody and we don't have anybody taking care of the queue we have a lot of guys in liga that is insane but we don't have anybody oh my goodness i am baffled all right let's change someone's region we have two guys on the whl uh let's put mendez north america oh he can't even do the queue uh, chl yeah well damn Okay, it's because right now, yeah, that's a C minus on his region accuracy. So we're going to keep him there then because that's his region accuracy. Um, and what about you? I had another one. Yeah, you. How are you looking? Because we definitely want to get some guys like looking at the queue. What are you talking about? D and then A plus here. My goodness. I don't think we have anyone that can actually draft Q right now. So that's gonna be it. We actually can't look at the queue. That's that's insane. All right, uh, we're gonna just have to hope at this point, see what happens. But my goodness, so we cannot even look at the queue. Our scouts are horrendous. So what we're gonna do? <laughs> hold up, we're not gonna be able to scout anyone from the queue. That's hilarious. Um, we're gonna see how we play out. Though. Okay, we'll do the draft. Uh, this is 2023, uh, 2022. Okay, so we have Connor Bedard right here who. In real life is franchise I, I don't think they have him as a franchise here um, so let's just see what they have of him but this guy he's gonna be good he, he's gonna be real good um, can we scout no we don't have scouts in this region so we're just gonna pin him can we scout no so we're just gonna pin him that's two centers and that's crazy uh, we got a sniper right there so we're gonna pin him uh, I don't think we can scout because we don't have the east of the US being scouted not being scouted so can we scout him we cannot so we should pin 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 and pin he's being scouted anyways pin and scout this is gonna be something this is gonna be really something more and scout There we go. Can't do more than that right now. See what it plays out in the next draft. We're going to go and verify. This time we're actually taking the scouting seriously. At year 2022 to 2023, it's the Conor Bedard year. I don't think uh, Matt Bay Mitchkov is in the game because he's Russian, which is rather extremely disappointing for me. But we'll see what we can do. We're definitely going to play it up until there. Uh, so far, so good. We're 6 and 1 in our first 8 and 1. Uh, first 9 games, first 10 games, we're 9 and 1. Uh, that's pretty solid, so we may actually be looking at um, a potential playoff position. Is we might actually have to trade uh, just to make ourselves that much stronger. You know what I'm saying? We definitely might have to make ourselves that much stronger. Uh, there we go. You guys are probably gonna hear me better now. So we got eight and eight for Vetchkin and Cole Caulfield, five and eight. Quinton Byfield, seven and four. Suzuki has a goal, ten assists. Kot Kanemi has three goals, seven assists. Anderson has three and six, three and five for Getla. Toffoli at three and four, Kirby Doc two and five, Eggblad one and five, Erler four goals, one assist, looking good. Armia one and four, five points, five points for Krebs. Um, see, Peyton Krebs is another one. I think I'm gonna probably have to let him go. Kirby Doc, I have him signed right now. How much? What's his contract like? Uh, six years, three point eight million. So I'm not worried. That's actually like really good for third line. Um, if he does develop more, I'm gonna put him up. Uh, probably on the second line next year, and uh, we're gonna have to get rid of. Uh, that one guy we actually like uh, which is Anderson from the original Montreal Canadiens um, but we're gonna see how that plays off let's just quickly check our AHL lines uh, Joel Teasdale leading the the way we got Pritchett we got Nick and Schumann 
Zvitov, Ilan, Kapadu, Arvi Pinard is doing okay. Pocket Bisson is doing okay. Um, we're, we're struggling a bit here, I'll be honest. We seem to be struggling. Uh, rookie goalies, we don't have any rookie goalies right now. We have Lingren and Demchenko in net. Okay, so definitely we're going to be putting in uh, our elite goalie that we picked up. We definitely want him in the lineup, but I think I didn't sign him this year. I, gave, I wanted to give him a year to develop. Um, so we're definitely going to keep on working on that one year to develop. So let's move forward to the next month. We're currently 9-1 and one and playoff bound. I don't think we're sitting top of our division, but we might be very close to top of our division. Uh, we're actually tied with uh, Toronto, which is nice. So when is our get next game against Toronto? I don't think we have one coming up this month. Because uh, we're definitely going to have to see how that one pans out. We're now in front. First in the division, two points ahead of Toronto, but we just lost two games in a row. Giving Toronto that chance to catch up. So we're definitely going to have to keep on pushing. As we win against Edmonton, 5-2. Lose to Detroit, 6-3. And the Maple Leafs now at 15 wins. We're at 13. Just catching up there with 14 wins. Let's keep on going. We get two more wins back-to-back. -back. We're now at 16 wins and ahead of the Maple Leafs by one point. We still get that shootout loss. We get that extra point right there. Playing Vancouver next. And we lose 5-3 in regulation. Toronto still now two points ahead of us. We beat Philly. And now facing the Minnesota Wild, we win and we are tied with the Montreal, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, 18, 5, and 1. And they are 18, 4, and 3, if I'm not mistaken, to have that high going right there. Ovechkin playing as usual with 14 goals on the season right now. 24 games, 14 goals. Cole Caulfield, though, not far behind with 12 goals in 24 games. Nick Suzuki above a point per game. Quinton Byfield at 21. Getzlaff at 20 and Kotkaniemi at 17. These are our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, top 6. Kotkaniemi is right outside the top 6 right now, so I'd like to see him push above Getzlaff. But Byfield, Suzuki, Caulfield, and Ovechkin are playing phenomenal. Suzuki is developing really well as the top 6 forward that he is. Uh, Kotkaniemi, he is an elite medium. I know people in Montreal always hate on him. Oh, he didn't score in 20 games this year. Yeah, okay, but uh, you try to play with 20,000 different lines mates. He's at 17 points in 24 games when he plays with the same line mates the whole time. Mind you, one is Alexander Ovechkin. So quickly, we're just going to go look at the record books because I want to see where we're standing right now uh, in our team. So this is the Mont uh, no, We don't want Anaheim Ducks. We want the Montreal Canadiens uh, record book. So right now, the current point leaders... Uh, on the team right now. So in the current roster is Nick Suzuki with 211 points. Jesperi Kotkaniemi with five seasons under his belt. Nick Suzuki has 145 points. Jesperi Kotkaniemi with 303 games played. Josh Anderson has 112 penalty minutes. Chris Drigger right now is one shutout. He has 10 wins. And Nick Suzuki has 66 goals. So that's the team leaders as of right now. The, none of the young guys have surpassed any of the all-time seasons. Now... If we go check out quickly our rookies, Peyton Krebs currently with 10, the Chris Chelios with 55 assists, shutouts, we don't have any rookies, Zachary Lutter with 6 goals, the record was Joe Malone with 44, Caden Primo had 5 wins as of right now, the record was 39, and Peyton Krebs with 11 points, the record is 71. So that's going to be it now, if we go in the NHL quickly, uh, we want to see the Scoring record race for most goals and Ovechkin is at 826. He may not catch up to uh, Gretzky this year and we may have to sign Ovechkin for one more year if he doesn't retire in the year 2023. Let's see if Ovechkin can break a record with our team playing maybe second line minutes next year. So we're going to keep on moving. He is a 94 right now, which is phenomenal. Uh, and if he keeps on performing this way, he is most indefinitely going to be making it to beating Gretzky's record. So right here, we're getting offered a Murphy and a fourth round pick, our own fourth actually, for Bergford. We're gonna decline, as uh, we're doing really well, and we don't need a fourth round pick right now. Already, it's gonna be a low pick at the pace we're going right now. So we lose 3-1 to the Capitals. Let's go view the draft class and see what pulls up out of the drafting we did. So we still don't know what Aminger and Lee is, obviously, because they're way up there. We're never gonna find out. We do have Ticken in here. We know he's an elite sniper for sure. Uh, Dingman, we don't know. Tulola is an elite medium defensive defenseman, which is pretty decent at 6'4". We got Zane Murphy at 6'1". He's unknown. Connor Bedard, elite medium playmaker. That's what they scouted him as. We've got Vunderbush right there, who's unknown. Hedden, Reed, Galiev, Forrest, Schofield. 
and that's it look you see nobody else that we've pinned is low but if we look at these these are our guys so we want to pin right now this is what we're looking at so let's draft them scan bleh, bleh. scout them if we can not scan them uh we're gonna just see what they offer exactly so we know we we, we want to be prepared you want to be prepared when you're looking at your three guys see what they can do from there give us an idea if they're worth picking up because who knows we might end up being really far down the draft it depends how far we go in the playoffs at the same time if we even make the playoffs right now we're in second place uh back by three points on toronto uh but we're doing really well we're really solid and we win two games in a row right now we're going up against the la kings okay we're coming up against the toronto game so i actually want to watch that one um play out in simulation because that's going to be an important game these are the important games right here so we're going to do this sim the game yes sim the affiliate game um let's see what it gives us so right here first period starting off and if we skim for nothing montreal more excited tyler to foley ovechkin and caught to Niemi scoring points on listen look at that first period jumping into the second period it is a scoreless period and in the third period the long goal for morgan riley and montreal takes the win 4-1 let's look at the three stars right there alexander ovechkin one goal two assists yesperi caught Kanemi, one goal two assists and three hits and Drigo with a one goals against 28 saves and a 965 save percentage this man played amazing for those two years we picked him up i think it's going to be worth it it's definitely going to make that difference on our team making those pushes and that was a big win for montreal we just closed that gap up real nice only one point behind toronto right now the next game we play against them we're going to see if we can beat them again we are now ahead of toronto by about one point if i'm not mistaken yes we are we just take that loss and we get a win right back so we are still ahead by one point this is extremely tight hockey ladies and gentlemen this is tight hockey right now montreal and toronto battling ovechkin had 27 goals in 37 games 45 points though above a point per game playing phenomenal suzuki as well dominating with 38 points in 37 games 30 assists though that is insane cole caulfield scoring has slowed down a bit at 14 goals and 21 assists in 35 games Caught Kanyemi picking up the pace now at 35 points in 37 games. And Quinton Byfield at 27 points in 37 games. And that's really not that bad. So you got a 30, 84 right there. Caught Kanyemi at 88. Caulfield still at 84. Suzuki at 85 and 94. And that is your top five right now. Playing real, real well. If you go look at our rookie right here. We got Peyton Krebs who is at... 15 points in 37 games and then you got Zachary Lutter at 10 Kirby Doc is struggling right here on there 12 points only in 37 games we may have to move him up uh, next season hopefully he picks up that potential because I really want to see him develop into that top player that I know he can be if not like I said we can move him he has a good contract it's easy to move and he still has value so we're gonna sim right here there is no Toronto in this month that we're playing so we're going through the month of january to the month of february and let's see how this pans out and there we go two losses at the start of the month january is always a rough month for the montreal canadians but we do get an overtime win against the florida panthers we don't get to hold on <laughs> to that first place in our division we're now two points behind Peyton Krebs and Joel Teasdale from Matheson and a fourth. We're not moving them right now. We are going for that playoff push, but I want to get right picks. Zachary Leher for Ryan Ellis and Braun, but look at that. They're asking, trying to give us over $8 million of cap lockup. I'm going to pass on that, and we're going to wait until the trade deadline. And with your opinions, we're going to look through the teams. You're going to tell me who you want me to get rid of, who you want me to try to get, and that's how we're going to know right before the trade deadline. We're going to decide, and then you guys are going to give me your comments because the next video is coming out two days from now, guys. Remember, every two days, NHL videos will be coming out. So if you want to see more of this content and you really want to be able to participate and give me advice, you have two days to write down your comments every time the video comes out. So let's go quickly check the draft class. We still don't know anything about these two Americans. Oh my God. So we do know that Lee dropped. Tikkanen is still up there as a second overall. This guy is at <laughs> not doing very well. Honestly, nine points in 36 games. That's just insane. This guy 25 and 33. Lee is at 29 and 30. And Digman is at 20 and 41. So these three Americans, all centers, 
are insane. Five nine, five nine, and five nine. Though that's the problem. They're short, short, short boys. Let's see how they pan out. As Montreal is pushing right now for the top two places. After two years of being at the bottom, the Montreal Canadiens are now in first place, three points ahead of the Toronto Maple Leafs. That is a huge push right there. And we do have no other game against Toronto until after the draft. So we're going to be simming up to day 27 this time. Actually, 26, just to be safe. But before we do, let's go look at the point leaders in our team. Ovechkin should still be in the lead. He is at 34 goals and 60 points. Uh, Ovechkin having a stellar season. At this rate, he is going for the 80 to 90 point season. Suzuki at 53 and Kotkaniemi at 50, just taking those jumps. Cole Caulfield gets two more goals in the next 15 games or so. He is now at 44 points, still playing phenomenal, but not getting the goals we want. And Quinton Byfield at 39 points to round out the top five. Josh Anderton on the first line though, 34 points in 49 games. He's playing consistent and he's definitely helping with Ovechkin and Kotkaniemi's production, which I like to see a lot. Aaron Eggblad playing solid with 28 points right there. Toffoli at 22, Army at 21, Kirby Doc at 19. It's been a while we don't get a lot of players that don't that score close to 20 goals. Right now we have one goal player with over 20 goals, and we got one, two, three, four players that should all attain the 20 goal mark this season if they keep on pushing. Potentially even look at that Yol Army at 12 goals. And that's what it is, right? We need at least guys that can score those 20 goals a season for you, uh, minimum. And we want them to try to get to that 30 goal mark. I'm not happy with 20, trust me. I'm not jumping up and down and celebrating. So, right now, last little sim before the end of this episode. A nice little shorty of an episode. We're going to go right here. And let's see how we do. This is the month of February. We get an offer where we get a defense, we get Susi a defense, and we get Arvinson a forward. It's a lot of salary cap, but they are asking for Zachary Lerner. But we're gonna say no as he's a French Quebecer and we are keeping him on our team. We do take two big losses though right off the bat. Three losses on our first three games in February. February seems to be rough for Montreal right now. Can we get a window? No, we don't. That's four losses in a row and we just drop below the, and we get their window. We go, we're back ahead and another win and we're starting to push again that's what i'm talking about playing is the washington capitals next and can we actually beat the washington capitals we do three two win chicago won the president's trophy last year and we take the win over them new jersey the stanley cup champions last year and we take the win over them we beat tampa who was clutching up to us we are now way ahead of the pack we lose to the coyotes we are now two points ahead of toronto as we lose to the Islanders and now Toronto ties us up and we win against the LA Kings. We are now at 86 points in 62 games. This does put us first in the league. So before we go look at the trades, we're going to see our position. We're going to see our team stats and we're going to see what we could do to move or not move. Ovechkin going for another 50 goal season. He's now at 44 goals. Cole Caulfield hits the 20. Quinton Byfield is two away. Kotkaniemi one away and Suzuki is five points away. Getzlaff and Doc both hit the 10 goal mark. Toffoli at 10 goals. Armia still at 14. Lutter almost at 10 goals as a rookie is pretty solid. Krebs at 4. Sider at 6. Romanov at 8. Brook at 5. Leskinen at 3. And Kaden Gooley, the rookie defense, playing relatively well with a plus 19, guys. 8 points, but plus 19. That is a phenomenal stat. But what I like to see here is all the guys with 20, 20, 25, 29, 30, 36, 40, 42. And here it starts getting interesting. 47, 52, 50. 62 62 and 77 so we got three guys that are a point per game and that is definitely the big help here but look at that cole caulfield developing on all ends passing the puck and shooting goals quinton byfield doing really well as well has a few more points to get to but we're gonna have a few guys with a 20 goal mark by the end of the season and that is huge now quickly we're gonna check right here montreal canadian is sitting top of the atlantic division and I believe we are also sitting top of the entire league, two points ahead of the Colorado Avalanche. But Colorado does have a game in hand, and so does Toronto. So that is scary. They both have a team in game in hand. So we have to keep on winning and making sure we get those wins. Quickly, we're going to check our players in the entire league because we didn't do that before. I don't think Ovechkin is league leading right now, to be honest. It be very shocking 77 points is good it's not what you expect but he is league leading one point against, ahead of mckinnon uh if we look at goals he is also leading in gold and assists you have john carlson with 
56 assists, Nylander with 56 assists, and Huberto. We do not have, besides Suzuki right there, we don't have anyone with that many assists. Let's go back here, 77, and McDavid at 72. So, you know, Stutzel with 71 points. This guy's insane, and he is a playmaker. That's what's crazy, but look at this. 71 points, this guy at 88 overall. He is solid as all hell. This is a hell of an impressive season this year, guys. Montreal has a player with the leading points. Now, quickly go check the edit line section, because don't forget, Avechkin did drop 1%, so we want to see if anybody went up. Nobody else moved up. Uh, the only thing we can maybe do is do this now for the rest of the season, but we're going to keep it as is. Zach Adelier hasn't moved, Kirby Dak hasn't moved, Toffoli hasn't moved, Armia, Getlaf, and Krebs either. Defensively, Kaden Gooley still at 8. This is right here a, a big line. That's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, four, six, four, and then 6 feet. And then you have 5'11", and 6'1", on the third pairing. Okay. Everything's looking good so far. Quickly. We're going to do trade players. We're just going to look at everyone's top three picks so right here we have anaheim getting rid of terry perot and coral Leo. but let's look at what they have we're going for the cup right now they have jimmy drysdale and trevor zegras right there 86 at 21 he has a 4.75 million dollar cap hit two years remaining and trevor zegras is pinned as a playmaker so that is an interesting one right there and they do have him signed for how many years Two years that's the problem he's going to be very expensive next year but they look at it they have thomas Tatar. they have thomas hurdle and i'm doing pretty good for themselves next team arizona coyotes they have ekman larson sitting there 31 years old clayton keller right there that's a playmaker winger 89 overall at 24 years old you got check right there as well all right boston bruins have passed the neck at the 92 mcavoy at an 88 he's 25 years old so it's definitely not time to pick him up i think these two guys they're done we can't touch them anymore Landis Cog right now doing pretty well with Boston, and that's the way it looks. All right, Buffalo is Jack Eichel, Dallin, Cousins, and Middlestat. Now, this is a power forward, uh, so I wouldn't be opposed to picking him up uh, as a power forward. He has a current 5.63 million for two years, though, so that is an expensive contract to add on to the books, especially when his contract comes due. Right now, this would be a power forward that maybe we can go pick up. 8.3 million, it is expensive. He'd fit on our second forward line, which I like a lot. And he has three years on his contract. So until he is 27, 28. And then we could look at probably getting rid of him. Oh, we didn't want to leave that. Sorry. Next team up, we have Carolina Hurricanes. There is Dougie Hamilton, Sebastian Aho, and Zvechnikov. This would be a hell of a center to pick, a sniper to pick up. Six years, 7.95 million. If we could probably offset a guy like Ovechkin or um, even some of our younger prospects that are at the bottom, some of our uh, power forwards. And we go pick up a guy like this. This is huge huge juice right there and a very interesting player to maybe look at so let me know guys do we pick up Andrei Zvechnikov do we try to get Andrei Zvechnikov because then we do have him locked up until he's 28 years old and that's a long-term contract that I like a lot next up we have the Chicago Blackhawks where Patty Kane is at a 93 10 million Bachvist is signed at 3 million 84 for two more years so that's pretty good and then you have the Brinkett right there for 9 million and Nylander right there for 6 million they are looking to move Jonathan Taze, who is an 87 overall center. So we might actually go get him and literally play him on the third line. He is a two-way forward, so maybe even the fourth line, just to get that little push. You know, let's see where he fits on our lines. He does fit in our top six forward lines. So he would fit on the top two lines, but we'll definitely we're going to look something out. Colorado Avalanche have Nathan McKinnon, 11.6 million this year, no extension. So this is someone we may actually pick up this year and maybe trade away Nick Suzuki. That may be what we're going to do. He's 27 years old though, so he is up there in age, but he is a solid playmaker that can definitely boost the team's potential. You got Kale Makar and Rantanen, as well as Bowen Byron, which we're not going to pick up, but they have a lot of guys to sign. That is the problem. Look at that contract. They are stuffed, and I think we're good if we do get McKinnon. Next up is the Columbus Blue Jackets, where we have Wierenski, Laine, Gwenther, this guy here, Dylan Gwenther, is a sniper. He has high potential. I think he can grow, but I don't know if we're going to pick him up. Colton Pareko and Roslavic. So that seems pretty good. Pareko is not a bad pickup. 5.5, he has two years left, and then we don't have to sign him back when he's 31. So that could be an interesting one to pick up for the push this year. Tyler Sagan, Klingberg, Heiskanen, and Gurianov. There we go. Look at that. Ben not even in their top. I don't even think he's on the team anymore. 
There he is, Jordy Ben at an 84 overall. That is hurtful for the captain, and he has a big contract right now. So let's keep on moving forward. The Detroit Red Wings have been playing really well. Lucas Raymond at 82, solid player right there. You got Dylan Larkin, Haynes, and Zadina at an 86. And Zadina is a two-way forward, not a power forward, nothing of the sort. But you know what I'd like to do is we're going to actually see if we can scout him. Let's do a quick scout. I just want to get a better idea of Philip Zadina uh, before the season. So Edmonton Oilers with Dreisaitl and McDavid. That is two big signs right there. Look at that. They have Dreisaitl coming due in two years. I don't know how they're going to manage to sign him, up, sign him back up. That's going to be another one that we might be able to pick up. But in two years, he's 29 years old. So we're we'll definitely going to have to see how that pans out. But that is an interesting one to see for sure. Florida Panthers with Huberto, Barkov, Husilius and Lundell. Interesting for the youth. Very nice team looking though. Let's move on to the Los Angeles Kings right here with Drew Doughty, Brylin, Turcutt, Drouin playing with the Kings right now. Minnesota Wild, you got Lemon, Granlin, Fiala, and Clefbaum. Nashville Predators have Yossi, Lambert, Lambos, and Tolvanen. A lot of young guns there. New Jersey with Hughes, who's franchise medium, Heischer, Forsberg, and Holt. That is insane. The Islanders with Barzell, Dobson, Pellick, and Wallstrom. The Rangers with Panarin, Lafreniere, Capo Caco, and Prokorkin. These guys, look at that, 10 million at 21 years old for six years, and he has a $1 million contract. I don't think they're signing Caco back. That's very interesting. Thomas Shabbat, Quinn Hughes is now with the Ottawa Senators. Stutzel, Assault, and Kachuk. That is a crazy amount of talent right there that is crazy crazy philadelphia with Provorov, kuturia cross and farabee nolan patrick at an 86 low elite that's not too bad he has 2.35 million for one more year we'll see what he's asking for in the offseason if they don't sign him back jones gensel mccann and Kapanen, and malkin for pittsburgh the san jose sharks have Carlson, sean wright murky couture and brent birds who are looking to move seattle has barkov that is insane that is the defensive barkov but that is still insane valk chittle and patch ready and St. Louis have Tarasenko, O'Reilly, Blaze, and Krug. And if we keep on moving, Tampa Bay Lightning have Kucherov, Hedman, Point, Sergachev, and Stamkos. And Toronto has Marner, Matthews, Riley, Nylander, and Tavares. We are almost at the end, guys. Vancouver has Pedersen, Clark, Nidimaki, Savoy, and Boser. And Vegas Golden Knights have Pietrangelo, Stone, Aturati, Carlson, and Theodore. Washington Capitals have John Carlson, Kuznetsov, Bo Horvat. Backstrom and Johansson. Now I know why they didn't sign back Ovechkin. Winnipeg Jets have Shifley, Sacha, Connor, Perfetti, and Veselainen. And that is it, guys. So take a look. Let me know who you guys want me to pick up in the trade deadline. That is exactly where we are right now. This is where the episode's gonna end. If you enjoy the content that I've been posting, if you don't mind, you can drop that subscribe. At least like that video if you're enjoying it. If you're not and you still stop by, well, thank you anyways. I appreciate the time you gave to this video. Have a good one, and whether you're watching this during the morning, night, or evening, good morning, good day, or good night, and we'll see you all next time, Geekers.